Hello everyone, Logan from Mage here. Where did playing cards come from? Let's find out. Magicians have been doing magic with cards for hundreds of years. They're the most popular medium and most versatile tool in magic. But where did they come from? That's actually up for debate, but experts agree that around 1000 AD, they originated in China, along with other board games like dominoes and mahjong. Now these cards looked a lot different from cards today, even more so when they made their way to Egypt and India. The earliest Indian cards were actually round in shape, and the Chinese cards were thin and stretched out. Now playing cards originated in China, but made their way to India, and then to Egypt, and then finally to Europe. The Egyptian soldiers were the ones who made it really popular, popular enough for European traders to take notice. All this took place around the 1300s, and from there, it spread like wildfire. Now playing cards have four suits, and the early suits of these playing cards were a lot different than what they are now. The suits on the cards that the Egyptian soldiers were using were coins, cups, swords, and polo sticks. It's a strange set of suits, but it represented the ways of life and pastimes of the aristocracy of the time. And theory has it, the coins eventually became diamonds, and the polo sticks eventually became clubs. Most games at the time were bulky and required extra pieces and boards, which is why playing cards were so convenient. And during the 1400s, French soldiers were huge fans. During 1337 and 1453, the French and English were engaged in the Hundred Years' War. And playing cards made their way to England through the French soldiers. And in time, playing cards left with the English colonists and made their way to America. And upon their arrival, Native Americans actually made their own versions of playing cards with leather. Now the suits and looks of the playing cards were vastly different amongst countries. However, in France, card makers took from all sources to make the four suits that we know today. They were easy to paint, nice to look at, and just made sense. Now the French were also the first to sort the deck into two colors, red and black. The French were also the first to add the queen to the court cards. Originally, the court cards only consisted of the knight, the knave, and the king. So by the end of the 15th century, we had our standard deck of playing cards. Royalty were the first users of playing cards when they first entered Europe, but once there were cheaper methods of printing, they became affordable for everyone. And almost immediately, gambling became a problem. Now the church hated this. In fact, one of the earliest recorded sermons was a sermon against the use of playing cards. The church believed that playing cards led to crime and lying, and often forbid them. During the Hundred Years' War, a lot of the neighboring countries tried to outlaw certain games and high-stakes gambling because they thought it was distracting and made their soldiers lazy. During the 17th century, a group was put together to be responsible for the trade of making playing cards. This group was called the Worshipful Company of Playing Card Makers, and they cared a lot about their product and making it accessible to everyone. However, the king at the time, King Charles, imposed a tax on playing cards produced, and until the tax was paid, the Ace of Spades was withheld from the deck. The tax grew over time to the point where a deck of cards in today's money would have cost $25. As a result, people would try to forge the Ace of Spades. One man in 1805, Richard Harding, was sentenced to death for this. This is why the Ace of Spades is most likely considered unlucky. In fact, the spades seem to be associated with death in general. They most likely represent the winter season, and there's something odd about the court cards. If you look at the court cards pictures, you'll notice none of them gaze upon the spade. Is this because they wouldn't dare gaze upon the face of death? Perhaps. While we're on the subject, cards weren't always used for gaming. They were quickly associated with the occult 
and aspects of numerology were found within. The four suits represent the four seasons. The 13 values represent the 13 lunar cycles. The 52 cards represent the 52 weeks in a year. And if you add all the values of the cards, jacks being 11, queens being 12, and so on, you would get 365, including the joker. In fact, originally decks only had one joker, and eventually they started adding another. Which, if we take that into account, that would take care of leap year. Now numerology basically states that there's universal knowledge to be found in numbers. This may be why with the numerical significance of a deck of cards, they were used in divination and communicating with higher powers. This is where the tarot cards come in. The tarot cards originated in Egypt and made their way to Europe through gypsies. The earliest deck we know of was put together in the 1400s and is seen to be an expansion of the normal deck of 52. The tarot deck has what is referred to as trump cards and there's 21 of them. These cards were added to the first deck of 52 and that was the first tarot deck created. Now these tarot decks were used for gaming similar to a game of bridge. Tarot comes from the Egyptian words ter, which means royal, and row, which means road. Which if there's any card mechanics out there, you would know that's a very weird coincidence. The first professional fortune telling with a deck of cards happened in the 17th century. To fortune tellers, the tarot deck was considered to be the lost book of Thoth. Thoth was the Egyptian god of wisdom and was said to put all his universal knowledge into a single book. With the numerical significance of a deck of cards, fortune tellers thought this book was actually a tarot deck. Now that we know the majority of playing cards history, when did they start being used for magic? As soon as playing cards were created, gambling followed, and with gambling came cheating. Now a lot of cheating can be done with sleight of hand. And sleight of hand existed way before playing cards, but it just made sense to use it for this purpose. A lot of the same sleight of hand used in card cheating is used in card magic. Although we don't know what the first card trick was, we do know the first magician to make them popular. Giovanni Panetti, an 18th century magician, was the first to use them on stage and from there, they grew. So the truth is, we're not quite sure when playing cards started being used in magic. There's four suits, four seasons, 13 values, 13 lunar cycles, 52 cards, 52 weeks in a year, 365 pips, 365 days in a year. If you take a deck of cards and you shuffle it face up and to face down over and over, there would be more variations of that deck than atoms in the universe. This is very mysterious and maybe why cards are mysterious in general. And maybe this is why they're used in magic, because cards themselves are inherently mysterious. Each deck is a book, each card a page, and each stack a story. Each of which we can change, twist, alter into telling any story we need to tell. Knowing what we know, it's interesting that we have found a pastime playing with a book that could possibly tell us everything we want to know about the universe. Yet, we use it to gamble, to mystify, and to have fun. Card players attempt to play with the profound, while card magicians and gamblers try to control it. After knowing what we know about playing cards, what do we do with that knowledge, and what do we do with the cards themselves? Well, pick a card.